we have to shift over to a very, I think, a very serious topic that Craig and Ray Razorfish were talking about yesterday. Biden's internet takeover plan. This is the internet that we work on, the internet that you browse, the internet that everybody uses on a day-to-day -day basis and how it affects is, affects you, the websites that you, that you go to, and why this is incredibly important. I hadn't heard anything about this. I work online on a day-to-day -day basis. I hadn't heard anything about this. They buried nope. us. So this is really the second go around on the same idea. Um, toward the tail end of the Obama administration, they extended Title II protection to the internet and made a huge deal out of it. They weren't able to extend it and, and basically mutate it. The original plan really was to do this at the tail end of the Obama administration. Um, I think because of the term or whatever, it wound up lapsing at the beginning of the Trump term instead. And that's when we heard the net neutrality spurg fit on social media. That was a, a bunch of bullshit. That was, look, if the Patriot Act wasn't patriotic and the Affordable Care Act wasn't affordable, three guesses what the net neutrality act wasn't going to fucking be. The Biden administration has asked the FCC to take complete control of the way inter uh, internet service providers do business in America. Uh, currently governed by the private sector, these ISPs, the... Uh, these ISPs are obviously the FCC would take control and establish rules and regulations to strangle the free market by deep government policies and regulations. This policy is so bad that one FCC commissioner is speaking out publicly against it. Commissioner Brendan Carr is calling the Biden administration. It's called the digital equity plan for all Internet services and infrastructure an unlawful power grab. Um, in particular, Carr says for the first time ever, those rules would give uh, those rules would give the federal government government a roving mandate to micromanage nearly every aspect of how the internet functions, from how ISPs allocate capital to where they build to the services that consume uh, consumers can purchase from the profits that ISPs can realize and how they market and advertise services to the discounts and promotions they can that can, uh, customers can 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 receive. So it's pretty much they want the FCC, and for those who don't know, the FCC is. They look over all your TV, all your radio, um, wire lines, all that stuff. So they're the people who are in charge of what can be said on broadcast TV, on cable and things like that. And that's what this is meant to do is to essentially put a stranglehold on the Internet. And as I said, it's a giant power grab. Um, the text of Biden's order expressly provides that the FCC would be empowered for the first time to regulate the following for every ISP. And now listen to what they, what they want to hand this power over to. Network infrastructure deployment, network reliability, network upgrades, network maintenance, customer premise, uh, premises, equipment, and installation. So uh, pretty much all deployment of all, all internet, right? Uh, depending on who, who gets it. Uh, here's the big one. Speeds, capacities, latency, data caps, throttling, pricing, promotional rates, imposition of late fees, opportunity of equipment rental, uh, installation times. They are micromanaging this entire thing. So they're looking to take the internet and make it a government entity. Absolutely terrifying. I think we're hip to the fact that Biden isn't con in control of his own bowels, let alone his own administration. This net neutrality nonsense was pushed toward the end of the Obama administration and again at the beginning of the Trump administration. And it really is about one wing of the party having wanted to regulate the internet for the better part of uh, 20 plus years. Why is nobody talking about this? Nobody on mainstream media is talking about this. Why? Because they want this to happen. If you're a major outlet, if you're CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. Fox, pick anybody, you want this to happen because you want the internet to play by the same rules that you do. And right now the internet doesn't do that. We're allowed to say what we want to say, when we want to say it, how we want to say it. That's not the same for cable TV and the mainstream media. They have to go in and uh, and make this a play an, an even playing field. It's digital equity after all, mm -hmm. and that's the idea. Yeah. And I think this goes so far beyond left, right, middle, independent. At the end of the day, if you're watching this show, if you have a phone and you look on the internet for anything, this will affect you. I mean, every like couple of years, they bring something new like this out and it, it's yes. rolled in a different package. Yep. We learned, you know, when Elon bought Twitter and started releasing Twitter files, the government's been, tank you know, tinkering in and had a, a major hand in social media and how it's regulated, and how people can talk online and how people can talk on the internet. We watched, you know, YouTube constantly being biased against certain people and certain narratives and all that stuff, you know, so watching a private 
uh, a company like Twitter or a group like Twitter that they had so much influence over disappear, become part of the private sector. Now they have no like skin in the game with that. I think it probably freaked them out. And they're like, we got to do something different, man. Like just go right to the source. If you don't think mm -hmm. this is about the election, you need to wake oh, up. One, yeah. This yeah. is about yep. controlling the election and making sure the right people stay in power. I don't yep, think yep. they care if we talk about comic books as long as we are not shifting anything that has to deal with the election. Right. Keep the people in power uh, that they want to stay in power. Control yep. the information. It is 100%. This is what they're doing in our school systems from elementary school up to college. Just mm -hmm. keep yep. the information that they want being taught to our young people in our college, yep. everything else. This is the whole, the whole thing. Uh, they know that the internet can be dangerous where people can speak their mind and show real facts and show things like that. And they don't like it because yep. people begin to, wow, wake up and like, is this really happening? This is what's going on. Yeah, we need to cut that, you know, and show what we want to show. It is crucial to know that the Clinton wing has wanted fe sweeping federal regulation of the internet since at least 98 when the drudge report dropped the lewinsky story right sank their party's chances for nearly a damn decade and clinton around that hillary clinton mind you was uh interviewed at the time and she said and i'm quote here i don't have any clue about what we're going to do legally regulatorily technologically i don't have a clue but i do think we always have to keep competing interests in balance i'm a big pro balance person unless of course she's ascending some stairs that's why i love the founders checks and balances accountable power anytime an individual or an institution or an invention leaps so far out ahead of that balance and throws a system whatever it might be political economic technological out of balance you've got a problem because then it can lead to the oppression of people's rights it can lead to the manipulation of information it can lead to all kinds of bad outcomes which we've seen historically so we're going to have to deal with that and i hope a lot of smart people are going to that was uh hillary clinton in like 1998 right around the time of the uh, lewinsky so this has kind of been in the pipeline with that wing of the party and the net neutrality shit from 2017 and then even a few years before that was really the latest iteration of this and now that biden is in power it's not surprising to anyone who's been paying attention that this is being pulled up uh pushed up the hill once again it's kind of funny watching this cultural change and i remember getting so much pushback talking about how net neutrality was fucking gay uh. it's funny because i hope that there's a shift now but this all ties into that and the whole argument is that the government believes that it is they should be the primary determinant and mm. the reason why they can justify a power grab is because they will say that the more private smaller entities isps and such they can't be trusted you know who can be trusted us mm -hmm. as in the government that's that was the whole position and i remember so fucking vividly getting so much pushback with these shill ass fucking content creatives talking about how end of new net neutrality was going to be the fucking worst thing in the world it was gonna we were all gonna get our internet throttled and guess what none of that gay shit happened but they were pissed the fcc was fucking pissed and they had been they, they had been talking about this shit for the past hell i think it was two months we're talking about this on blaze it was like a couple of months ago there was some vote that they approved of some shit to start talking and uh and revamping net neutrality which that's all that it is it's the same concept it's it, it's the same way that they're justifying that uh, uh, uh this this law isps can't be trusted we can be trusted. Therefore, we should be able to just take the shit and basically determine what the rules are going to be. That is attractive to socialistic, communistic fucking people always fucking has has been. However, the way that they can justify it is they can say that the little guys, hey, you don't want to have your Internet throttle. Right. Because yeah. they think that, hey, the ISP, they, they present it as if the are these uh, definitely ISPs are, like they're the evil sons of bitches. And I'm not sitting there trying to shield for all the Internet service providers. I'm not trying to say that that's the case. Like they're like great or something. However, I would much rather be dealing with fucking spectrum if I have some problems in the goddamn federal government. That's absolutely. Uh, in the event that there's some some Internet issues. This is a fucking terrible idea. But don't be surprised if it does start to make its rounds. You're going to see a lot of creatives that will be on the side of the fucking government because the government's going to lie to them and say, well, ISPs are going to do you in. Do you remember SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act? SOPA was proposed by a Republican uh, in 2011 to expand yeah. the ability of U.S. law enforcement to combat 
online copyright infringement and on and online trafficking in counterfeit goods on the surface you go oh, okay that makes sense right um but as you dig into it deeper well as with all these bills there's more nefarious things going on this is why my favorite quote like really in history is eternal vigilance is the price of liberty because every time i mean look we were already talking about sopa pippa net neutrality, all this stuff, all of these rules and regulations ultimately have the same goal. And they've been around for decades beyond even the internet's existence. This is what the government does. It always tries to take power and it has a long game to go. So we always know that at the end of every, at the end of all of this, the goal is to control all the information, to be able to control people, force them to do what, uh, what they want. And, you know, there is nothing more now more important than your online identity. Everything that you do goes online, your money, uh, your livelihood, everything that the world revolves around is there. So if they can control all of that, they basically have you by the balls. And that's what they want here. So they will keep chipping away at it. They'll call it a different thing each time. Yep. They may tweak some of the regulations. They're definitely going to tweak the verbiage and the language in there because that's another thing that they love to control, tweak what words mean. And then you can just change anything, you know, you, you can literally mm -hmm. change the constitution. If you change what the words mean, it's like, well, the words are still there, but we've changed what the definition, the interpretation of it is. So even though it might say, yeah, you've got like freedom of speech, what, what is freedom if we define it differently? What does the FCC, what does the Federal Communications Commission do? According to its own website, it regulates interstate and international communications through cable, radio, television, satellite, and wire. And they also safeguard everything that is said on TV, radio, cable, satellite, and wire. You can be fined for saying the wrong thing, for saying naughty words on TV, the words that you can say and things you can't say, for not following the FCC's rules. How quickly do you think shows like this go away that say, hey, free speech is a good thing. You being able to say horrible things is fine because ultimately, the shit that you spew will be will be filtered out because at the end of the day, people will realize that it's dog shit. You have to allow people the opportunity to have to say dog shit for you to know that it's dog shit. Absolutely nothing good can come from this. This, this will destroy, destroy the internet as you know it, specifically in the United States. And the old quote of nothing is so permanent as a temporary government program, yep. right? <laughs> this isn't looking to be very temporary at all, right? And then, then on top of everything that we just talked about, you have a presidential candidate coming out today saying everybody online should have their, should have their first and last mm -hmm. name and no avatars. And it's like, you know, do you, does everybody see what they're doing? The chip, the chip, 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 chip away. Of, uh, of everything that makes the internet and life in America so great. It's all just being slowly chipped away. But this right here is, this is not left wing. This is not right wing. This this is everybody. Mm -hmm. And here we are now. Owen Schroyer is in yep. prison right now for words. For words! Yeah. It's happening. He's literally in solitary confinement right now over words. First, they came for Alex Jones, and uh, it's it's it, they're not going to stop. I think that this is definitely something that I'm glad we're at least able to highlight from our perspective. I can't believe that it's flown under the radar. Shout out to Razor Fist and, and Craig for covering it. They had a really good discussion over there on side scrollers as well. And uh, yeah, man, crazy stuff, crazy oh. stuff indeed.